You were supposed to be his queen, and you let him slip through your fingers. We're not going to hold it back any longer, Queen Leah. We have a message for you, and we mean business. Can you just leave Audrey alone? She was obviously under a whole lot of stress when she chose to steal the queen's crown, and clearly you're the one to blame for her villainous breakdown. I want to be dangerous. If there's one thing that everyone noticed, it's that you're the real villain of Descendants 3. While Queen Leia was busy trying to control her granddaughter's life, we got busy with spotting out 10 things everyone missed in D3. Keep watching to find out why Audrey was able to touch Maleficent's scepter without getting cursed. Well, I, I wanted them, so I took them. 80s tells all. We had no idea that Mal knew who her father was, but what was even more shocking was finding out that Hades and Maleficent were actually married once upon a time. Hades tells all during his father-daughter duet, saying that it wasn't easy being married to Mal's mother. She's <laughs> not the easiest person to get along with. We didn't know that weddings happened on the Isle of the Lost, so this rapid-fire fact caught us by surprise. Audrey treats Chad like a dog. The way Audrey treats Chad proves what most of us already knew. Audrey has zero feelings for Cinderella's son, but when it comes to Chad, it's easy to see that he would follow Audrey to the end of the world. Audrey treats Chad like the lovesick puppy that he is. She even stroked his hair like the top of a dog's head. But then again, Chad didn't seem to mind. The Sleeping Beauty reference. Queen Leia throws some serious shade her granddaughter's way as soon as Mal and Ben get engaged. She tells Audrey, Your mother could hold on to a prince in her sleep. And well, she isn't exactly wrong. After all, Audrey's mother is Sleeping Beauty, so this statement is totally accurate. Mini Audrey and Ben. Getting dumped is never easy, which is why most of us feel for Audrey, but we felt her heartache even more when we glanced around her dorm at Oridon Prep. Audrey had plenty of pictures of her and Ben around her room, and we spotted one frame which showcased Ben and Audrey as little kids. This means that Ben was Audrey's first love ever since she was a little girl. Now that is just heartbreaking. Living conditions. It's hard to believe that the people of Oridon eat scrumptious meals day in and day out, while the people of the Isle pick flies out of their baked goods. The Isle's living conditions are downright awful, just ask the VKs. Poor Gil had never even tried a grape before, or picked fresh berries from a bush. The VKs definitely deserve to be spoiled from here on out. Dude the Talking Dog Another thing we noticed in D3 is that Dude the Dog was still able to talk. Yeah, Audrey showed up. She put everybody to sleep. This sort of confused us since Dude could only speak because he ate a truth gummy. So wouldn't he go back to barking after a day or two? That is, unless Mal made Carlos an endless supply of truth gummies so that he could continue chatting with his best pup. The Maleficent Reference when Queen Leia refused to invite Maleficent to her daughter's christening, the villain went bonkers. And well, the same can be said about Audrey. She totally embodies Maleficent when she crashes Jane's birthday party. Looks like someone forgot to invite me. Before putting everyone to sleep. Queen Leia's truth. Queen Leia might be the evilest grandmother that ever lived, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't genuinely care about Audrey. Leia looked super distressed when Audrey was unconscious in her bed. Despite hating villains, Leia let Hades use his ember on Audrey, which saved her life. This led to Mal wanting to open the barrier once and for all. But unlike everyone else, Leia looked super angry when Mal took down the barrier. Jane's birthday cake. Jane's birthday cake looked absolutely delicious, which is why Celia and Dizzy stole a piece before Carlos could get the cake to Jane. But Celia and Dizzy weren't the only ones who ate a piece of Jane's cake. Was it just us, or was this cake never ending? Everyone kept cutting out huge pieces, but somehow there was always enough cake to go around. Harry Hook wants a girlfriend. We love Harry Hook. He's suave, sleek, and everything we could ever want in a pirate. But as it turns out, Harry wants more from life than being Uma's first mate. Was it just us, or was Harry desperately trying to find himself a girlfriend? And you, my little duckling. From Uma to Jane to Audrey, it's clear that Harry wants a first mate of his own. We owe you an apology. At the end of the film, Mal, Audrey, and Ben all manage to bury the hatchet. Mal and Ben tell Audrey that they owe her an apology, but funny enough, they never say, I'm sorry out loud. It looks like Mal and Ben need to brush up on their Oridon manners. But in the end, we're just happy that Audrey came back to her senses. A glowing dragon eye. When Audrey breaks into the museum, it's clear that she's only after the queen's crown. But that's when something strange happens. 
Maleficent's scepter, Dragon Eye, starts glowing a vibrant green and calling Audrey over to it. And on top of that, Audrey doesn't get cursed for 1,000 years after grabbing it. The only explanation we can think of is that Dragon Eye was bored and sensed Audrey's anger and sadness, making her someone he could easily turn into a villain. Did you guys notice anything that we didn't? Sound off in the comments section. And that's a wrap. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to The Things. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.